Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Forky, yeah. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you're watching. Got a special guest on, a friend of mine who founded Porky's Corner with me three years ago next month, Rico. How are we doing, Rico? Good. Lots of people have had nightmares since he founded Porky's Corner. Everybody's had nightmares, particularly <laughs> Robert Smith and Johnny Nelson. <laughs> Bean. <laughs> and Bean. Today's going to be a Porky special, so keep tuned in and watch it to the very end because we've got some topics here that are going to blow the lid off the sport of boxing. Right, we'll start off with the Boxing Board of Control, Rico, and I believe that you've found a few things out about their finances with your fancy tech gear and what's going on, what's, what, what's happening, Rico? Yeah, so no, I just looking on companies out of their account. So, you know, it's a body, right? It's a body that's meant to be sanctioning British titles and area level titles for bouts. So 2019, uh, sorry, 2018, they haven't filed their accounts last year. They made one and a half million pounds of money, which profits were 900,000. And then most of that went into their expenses. So if you think about it, a lot of them, they must be spending over 20 grand a week on expenses. How are they spending 20 grand a week on expenses? So basically, do they get taxed on that, Rico? No, because what they do is if you have profits or if you make money, what you do is you try and come up with ways to spend the money. And what that means is then you don't have to pay tax. So you try and get to as close to zero as possible. So, you know, all the chauffeurs that Robert Smith has had, all the parties, all the WBC conventions, every, every, all those jollies, all the nice hotels and those salmon with uh, egg breakfast that you keep talking Take about. The wife, That's all expense. As well, Rico. Take it in yes, the, right, the wife. Charlie Giles. Yeah, administrative expenses, £914,000. So I don't know what they're doing. I mean, how many people work for the board? There's, no, there's only an handful of people in there, there, isn't there? There's not that many. They're, all, they're working from a semi-detached house, aren't they, in Cardiff? Yeah, but if you add all the inspectors and everything else, I mean, what do the inspectors get paid? So not a lot. Oh, not a lot off them. But it's the expenses where they're hammering it. It's a bit like politicians, isn't it, really? Yeah, I, exactly. I was looking at some accounts of the day that somebody sent me in. I've been asked to do this loads of times. I think I've done one video on it. A certain MP in Doncaster on 240 grand a year, but her expenses were 260, so that's 500 grand a year. They get uh, permission to build a... Uh, a study on the house, an extension. They get a second yeah. interest-free mortgage in London, and they're still stopping in hotels. It's free gratis. You can't. They might not get a lot of money out of the job, but it's free gratis and big living. It's like it's come out about Robert Smith. He was banned for drink driving, and he had a chauffeur for the full length of his ban. That'll go through his expenses, won't it? Of course it will. But how many people work full time for the board? Robert Smith works really full time. Some really of these others have other jobs, don't they? Yeah, uh, I know there's a few secretaries there, isn't there, at Cardiff and that. I know when you ring up, if you want to apply for anything, it's £10 straight away for application and you get to send you a yearly book. So I had that when I went for my seconds licence. Yeah. And so you're £10 straight away. Them books are like 30p to print. It's all about the money. And they've had the noses in the trough this long now that... The internet and, and, and data protection and all this, it's all coming out now. And I, I believe that there's a handful of people at the Boxing Board of Control that will be investigated by the authorities before long. And I believe they're going to go to prison. Just like MPs did with expense for those, these are going to jail, mate, these people. And they need to be yeah, I... messing with kids' heads. Fighters get punched. You see that there? That's a head. It's not designed to be punched in the head. Kids are getting punched in heads, and these people are giving decisions on who wins, and they're going with own own promoter all the time because it's better for them down the line. It's not incompetence yeah. and it's not corruption, it's both. It's shocking. Yes. 
So if we think about this in the context of why is this important, so we think about Terry, Terry O'Connor's decision yesterday. If Terry O'Connor gets ousted, isn't he a person that's at risk of blowing the lid? Yeah, the problem, right. What you need to do, what you need to do is to keep everybody happy. together, everybody happy. Nobody gets reprimanded on the inner circle because they all at risk. It's like the it's like the mob, the Italian mafia, isn't it? It's like everybody needs to be kept happy, otherwise somebody might go and rat to the cops. It's like the commission, Paul Paul Castellano, boss of bosses, investigating. Uh, Vincent the Chin Gigante for going out and shooting somebody over a loan sharking day. Yeah. They're all just going to say, yeah, Of course. Oh, uh, well done, Vinny. Could you imagine O'Connor and Smithy? I call him Smithy now. O'Connor and Smithy sat having a chat about this and saying, How did you come, Terry, to get that card like that? Why is your card nine rounds different? to Marcus McDonald's. And let's not forget a fight that's gone under the radar. Thomas Asomba and Thomas Ward. That were a 10-round fight. How did O'Connor have a seven-round swing from Marcus McDonald? There's only 10 rounds in the fight. Am I right? Yeah. And that nobody's right. mentioning Thomas Asomba because Thomas Asomba's kept his dignity and he's not gone screaming. Vasquez has kept his dignity. He's not gone screaming, but he's signed for MTK now, hasn't he? So that's all a bit convenient, isn't it? But the point I want to mm -hmm. make is, how did O'Connor come to them scorecards? Is he going to come out and explain to us, well, I were watching this round and I were looking for this in this round and that happened in that round. And can he go through each round and explain how he got to them scores like they did with that, uh, the woman judge, you know? The team yeah, Adelaide Bird. All right. Was the Adelaide Bird? Adelaide, one of them were the Tim Bradley. Yeah. Video. They made them explain. They sat them down, didn't they? And made them explain. Why can't we do this with boxing board of control? Are they so aloof and pompous and arrogant that they don't have to explain themselves? Because the only people they're going to answer to when it comes on top is not us, the fans, or anybody else. It's the police. They're the only people that can take them down. The well, there is, there is another person that can take them down, which is the promoters, right? So there's yeah. there's two things that we need to look at, which is when will Terry O'Connor be next on the show? Because he might have been internally said, all right, Terry, stay away from shows for a few months. We'll still give you the brown envelope. And let's see when he's next on the show. But the, but the real thing, if boxing promoters care about the sports and care about fans' opinions is, they should say, like Bob Aram said about the one card last weekend and one ref, they aren't they aren't judging my shows. They aren't going to do that anymore. I mean, if Eddie Hearn felt so strongly about this, then we aren't we shouldn't see Terry O'Connor on any more matchroom shows. Yes, very good. Let's see if Eddie let's see if Eddie actually backs up what he's saying. If he thinks it's incompetence and it was outrageous they had his phone out, whether you believe they had his phone out or not, he was still looking at something else, then Eddie Hearn should draw a line and say, I don't want Terry O'Connor on my show. So I'm paying for this stuff. I'm paying for the refs. I'm paying for the judges. I can choose. I don't want somebody. You appoint whoever you want, but I don't want this person. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good That's a good point, that, Rico. That's a good point. But the, 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 what they'll do, you see, it'll blow over for a month and then O'Connor will appear. But I know when the fans get back in the arenas because I've never felt a vibe like this before about corruption in the sport when the fans get back in the arenas they'll let the presence know i don't need to whip any storm up the fans will vote with their feet let me tell you do you remember that film with jake lamotta where de niro said something and he said the people knew well the raging bull know. we did it with Brexit. yeah we'll do it with boxing the people <laughs> knew what went on against vasquez ritson and i like ritson but he got beat, but the scorecards were horrific. Horrific from yeah. Michael Alexander as well. He gets away scot free, him. Michael like Alexander. This is, I think the point is this has nothing to do with Ritson because he's the guy, he's the guy in the ring, right? Yeah, it's not his fault how things are scored. It, you know, he had a bad fight. He's a decent fighter. So best of luck to him. But the problem is this happens all the time and it always happens to 
the away fighter. The home fighter always gets a decision. Yeah. He can't be. But if there's if these people are incompetent, right? If they are incompetent, then we should have sometimes where the home fighter loses, uh, sometimes where the favorite loses. But it's always the underdog. It's always the away fighter. So that's why we know it's corruption. That's why we know there's something else going on. What do you, that's a, that's true. That. What do you think about Macklin and Bean coming out, making a massive point about them not being biased and that, that they had Vasquez? I mean, heaven forbid they should pick a winner or the guy who won. Why they keep forcing it on social media, on YouTube, and on their channels, on other people's channels, seconds out, boxing social, IFL, Sky, match and unboxing, plus their instas uh, uh, and Twitter. They keep forcing it. Uh, we weren't biased. Look what we we even said Vasquez won. And Ritson's a matchroom fighter. No, 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 no. Ritson's MTK, not matchroom. So Yeah, well, look, they say what they saw, what they are, is they shouldn't be commended for doing their jobs, right? If you if you do your whatever your job is, if you not shit at it, then you shouldn't get credit for being not bad at the job. Whereas they were just doing their jobs. But will they call out Terry O'Connor? Will they say that Terry O'Connor's bad? Why are they talking about they? This is not about their scorecards. This is about corruption in boxing and incompetence. This is nothing to do with those two. They shouldn't be out there telling that they've done their jobs and expect to be commended. Do you feel now that the fans, since the Ian John Lewis, I mean, how many chances does Ian John Lewis, Terry O'Connor need? Do you think that since these have done that many bad mistakes, do you think that the fans are going to be on them every show now? And you, th- uh, you know what, fans have short fans have short memories, right? So, yeah, I, like I said to you before, you know, with FIFA when Seth Blatter got ousted, um, and he was corrupt and incompetent. They had to get external investigators to look at what was going on and all the money that was being funneled to these different places. And everybody in football knew this was going on. The clubs, you know, fans, everybody else, you know, countries winning World Cup bets that shouldn't be winning them, all sorts of backhanders. Ultimately, it's all down to the fans. I mean, the fans can, as, as Robert Smith said, he doesn't care about the fans. Does Eddie Hearn care about the fans? No. I mean, most of these people in boxing don't. So... There's only two things the fans can do. They can keep complaining, keep on trucking, as your mug says, uh, and also just not buy pay-per-views, not buy tickets, not not go to shows and say why they aren't doing it. They've lost faith in the governance of the sport. They don't think it's a fair sport. So that, that's the only thing fans can do because what other power do fans have? Don't watch, the, don't watch the Sky show. Stream the fights if you want to, but don't watch them on Sky. Let the numbers drop. Uh, be vocal on social media and say why well, you're not going to watch it. You know, start boycotting boxing. And we spoke about it separately. You said, should fighters not fight because of Terry O'Connor? I think, of course, they should fight because they need they need the payday. But it's managers and promoters that need to stand up and fans need to, you know, make their voices heard. And this can't be just a moment that people say, all right, well, the board are incompetent. We knew this was coming. Just don't watch the Sky Show. Stream them. Do something else. Don't buy tickets. Don't buy pay-per-views. And make, make it clear why you're not doing it. Did we have a big stink up like this, though, about drug testing? We had the urn. They were going to make a stance and that. That were on a Saturday night. And then on the Monday, they made he made a fight with uh, two drug cheats. I'm not going to say all, but... And, and is this the same sort of thing? Eddie Earns come out and said, Terry O'Connor's a disgrace, is this and that. But once the dust settles... O'Connor will be back on a matchroom show, won't he? And Eddie will of course. I mean, look. Out he's got of course he will. On him, he? Yeah, I mean, if I was Eddie Hearn, right? Well, if I was Eddie Hearn the way he is now, well, I mean, personally, I'd just say, no, he's not coming on my shows. But if I was Eddie Hearn, what impact did uh, Terry O'Connor's poor judging have on him? None. If anything, it gave his fighter a, a good decision, right? So well, Ritson's not his fighter, but it gave somebody that. The w- well, the work. Yeah, but somebody that he works, somebody that he works with, right? It gave them a good decision. Yeah. So this incompetence and corruption only benefits Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, and the home promoters' fighters. So 
why would they call for change unless they care about what fans think or want integrity in the sport? They'll look to do that fight again now. Vasquez has gone to MTK, won't they? I mean, Vasquez was robbed on MT. I was there. I went to your call to watch uh, Vasquez against O'Hara Davis, and Vasquez was robbed there. But O'Hara Davis, to his credit in that fight, when they gave the decision, he raised Vasquez's hand and he said, and he was shouting to the crowd and said, This man won the fight. He knew it was wrong. Do you think that it were another MTK decision for an MTK fighter? You know what? I, I don't really know how this stuff works exactly, whether it's the managers talking to the judges and refs or whether it's the promoter. I, I personally think it's, it's sort of like one of those unwritten rules, right? That we know, you know, we know which way to score the fight rather than anything else. It's been going on too long, though, now, hasn't it? And even I'm starting to get... I, even me, and I'm, I love boxing with all my heart, but I, I'm starting to, I'm starting to fall out of love with it now. Do you know, from, from when I first started, I was like, wow, we Dennis, it was amazing. And as I've gone along, the people in it and the corruption and the decisions and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, I wish I'd not got so close to it. And I think, God, what, what? Yeah, like I, said, I feel the same way. I, I feel the same the fighters, way. Don't I, me? I always back the fighters. And, and, and I think, God, people are getting punched about and you've got promoters and, and managers manipulating the system, even trainers, border control, commentators. It's a cesspit. And I, and I think the reason the governments have not got involved because they said it's rotten to the core and they've just left it for tens of decades, haven't they? Just leave it because it'll never change. You've got people like Bob Arum who's been in sport 54 years and he won't die. They tried to, mm -hmm. They've tried to kill him off 10 years ago. He's back stronger than ever. He's like Michael Myers out Halloween. Bob Arum will see me off. He's, he's 40 years older than Probably me. Probably will. He'll see me off. Mean, as, well, as will Don King. Hey? As will Don King. As will Don King. He's been at it 49 years. Warren's been at it since 1980. Ern's been at it since 86 stroke 87. The, but these people have had their noses in the trough that long now, and the rules will be there to be manipulated. And we can make ripples, but I doubt very much that we're going to stop it. The only people that can stop all this corruption is the fans. They've got to vote with the feet. The casuals have caused a lot of this. But the fans have got to vote with their feet and say, Do you know what? I'm not buying that pay-per-view. That's not pay-per-view. Do you know what? I'm not going to that show. It's a crap show. Instead of, yeah, we'll go there and we'll get pissed up and off our heads and it's an event. Forget the event. What about the boxing? Forget it's turning yeah. into WWE. We've got different scripts every day. It's shocking. Anyway, moving on. Uh, but I think it's an important point you make also that don't, I'm not saying stop going to boxing, don't go to the big shows if they crap, go to the small hall shows, you know, support the small hall promoters, support the local kids, don't, you know, don't support the big guys because at the end of the day, the small hall promoters, whether they be guys like, um, you know, Steve Goodwin or, you know, Steve Wood or these other guys, they are guys that are involved in the sport. They're not making much money out of the sports. And these are guys that bring the kids through. They aren't the ones that have to sway with the board. Support those guys and support the local fighters. Don't go to the matchroom shows. Don't go to the Warren shows because that's the problem, isn't it? The more you go to those shows, the more you are getting the status quo to continue. Yeah. Well, something needs to be done because it can't go on like this anymore. I mean, these people are just spinning narratives and they're getting caught out with their lies and then they just spin another. Eddie Earn were caught out with a corker the other day. He were asked, why, I think it was Rob Tebbett who caught him out. Why, why did you say that Dylan White got up and all this? And he, and he went, I don't know. I, I thought he did and I just sort of went along with it and I believed it myself because I'm selling it. 
And then he just sort of laughed. He sort of laughed. And then he, he were like, Phew. you know, it, it reminded me of a story I heard because you know Jeremy Clarkson's from Doncaster, don't yeah. you? Right. I'm not gonna say No, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's yeah, Jeremy Clarkson's from, from Doncaster. And he he uh he were at school and he were quite annoying at school. And he used to flick back of this kid's ear who were a smaller kid, and he were the biggest kid in class, Clarkson. And and he and I've heard Eddie were like that at school. You know, one of them annoying brats, because Clark's yeah. from money, isn't he? His mum uh, designed Paddington Bear, didn't she? You know, Paddington yeah. Bear, the, the car yeah. or whatever. His mum were, were, were one of the forces behind that. But Clarkson were annoying at school, and Eddie Earn, he's, he's like that. Uh, annoying, pompous, arrogant, a bit like the Board of Control. And when Tebbit caught him out with this lie, Eddie Earn, he just went, well, I, I don't know. I just thought that happened and I just sort of went along with it because I'm selling it. He were like, he knew what he were doing was lies, but they kept it up. Like Bellew the other day got caught out with a corker. There's nobody done as many shows as Matchroom this year. Oh, I remember that. He's done eight, but Bob Aaron's done 36. <laughs> so, but, and then Bellew were put in his place and then he sort of like turned it round in his tweet, but... It's if it's not Bellew, it's Nelson or Macklin. You've seen the Macklin one, we read that out, out on my channel, didn't you? Yes, remember them details. Thank you. Point I want to make is these people are from the Bean Masons, they are part of the problem, but it's filtered down, isn't it? From Bean Ed Robinson to these, it's filtered down. They know it's wrong, but they can't help themselves because they've got an exclusive deal with Matchroom. I don't want to keep banging on about this because it's becoming boring, but Adam Smith's narrating the story as a commentator, but Adam Smith is the head of Sky Boxing who have a deal with Matchroom that's exclusive. It's a conflict of interest on a massive scale. You wouldn't get the head of Channel 5 Boxing commentating and narrating stories or the head of BT Sport doing it, would you? So why do or we... Or Stephen have... Espinoza. Or Stephen hey. Espinoza commentating on Showtime fights. You would have guessed that, would Stephen you? Stephen Espinoza commentating on Showtime fights. There would be hell to pay. <laughs> Oda Bella and them would flip their lids. But we put up with it with Sky, don't we? So he's been being looked after behind the scenes. Is he on bonus? What is fucking going on? I want to know. You know, you know. Uh, I always think about this. The problem with boxing is we as fans, us hardcores, uh, we live in an echo chamber, right? So we follow certain people on Twitter. We we might moan about stuff. But when Eddie Hearn says that why got up after knockdown, sorry, knockouts on Sky Sports, people watch that, the casual fan, and they'll buy into it. But the casual fan won't go on to IFL, Boxing Social, or any of these other channels. So we are the ones that some of us are being lied to, right? Some of these matchroom mongs are just, you know, they'll just believe anything Eddie says. But for the casual fan, that's the people that they're conning because they are the people that buy the pay-per-view. And that's why, for hardcore fans, don't buy the pay-per-view. And the reason is, if you don't buy the pay-per-view, you just rely on the casual fans. But... Eddie knows he can say whatever he wants and get away with whatever he wants because we'll end up buying the pay-per-view because we're mugs, right? It doesn't matter our opinion because we still tune in. Unless you know how to stream and all this other stuff, which is everybody should be able to do that in 2020, right? Yeah, it's not good, mate. It's not good. But uh, should we move on to Saunders Murray? Yes. <laughs> how old is, so is Murray? 39 now. 38? 38. Yeah, 39. 39. Yeah. Who was he, he beating last year? So Didn't he retire there? like a year ago? Didn't he retire a year ago? He he's retired. He's been out of the ring a year. I've not got uh, a problem with it. No. I haven't got a problem with it. But cause if the belt's not on the line, but it's a world title fight, I have a problem with that, me. That's a problem in my eyes. <laughs> So, so I, look, I have a problem. The problem is this. If you're a world title fighter, you should fight with your battles. You can't be having these fights without battles. Otherwise, it's pointless. Otherwise, why do we have rankings and challenges? 
right? So, but the problem that I have is the WBO in June had rankings, top 15, super middleweight to middleweight. Martin Murray, who retired a year ago, was not ranked in either of those. In August, sorry, August he wasn't ranked. September, last month, he uh, appeared, right? He appeared at number 12. Wally Munro Jr. dropped out. He appeared at number 12 in the rankings for the super middleweights. And this month, yesterday, we were announced that a WB, WBO-sanctioned world title fight between Billy Joe and Martin Murray has been made. So how does a man that hasn't fought for a year get into the rankings that they can sanction a fight? I mean, how does that happen, right? I'm going to tell you how it's going to happen. Eddie Hearn's going to need a massive favour from the WBO in the next few months because if Usek beats Chisora, Usek's going to want his WBA mandatory shot, isn't he, against Joshua yeah. or Pula. Now, so Eddie Hearn's going to need to keep the WBO sweet and in his pocket. That's why, because otherwise Saunders Murray would be for no belt. Saunders had a belt, didn't he? And he fought somebody and they want a belt on the line. Would it the Charles Adamo fight? Uh, maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, why can't they do Saunders Martin Murray for no belt and save some money, save some sanctioning fees? But we're in tough times now, so the WBO are going to want sanctioning fees so that Eddie Hearn can keep them sweet because he's going to need a favour. He's going to need Usyk to be put on back burner so he can get the Fury fight twice next year against Femi. Do you know what I mean? That's what I think. Yeah, but... Look, I I mean, best of luck to Martin Murray and, you know, he seems like a good guy and he's yeah, making... Cameron he's, were going to fight him a his... year ago, you know, Martin Murray. They got offered the fight on the Monday after Liam B, uh, his last won his last fight. And he knocked it back, Liam, because he said, oh, I've been out and all that, and I've put about a stone on. And then Dennis were like, well, you've just done a camp. So that's how close money was to fighting somebody like Liam. And now all of a sudden, he's done nothing since then, Murray, and he's fighting for... <laughs> He's fighting for a world title. I mean, yeah, oh. but I think we have to be. I think we have to be fair, right? If um, if Billy Joe Saunders was fighting against a foreign guy that hasn't fought for a year, that's thirty eight years old, that has just come to rankings, everybody will be outraged. Just because he's a British fighter, we shouldn't be saying, okay, it's. I mean, you agree, right? The world title's there, but it's not. That's not the way how the ranking should operate. The ranking should operate that you can get somebody into the ranking so that you can make a fight. Listen, There's lots of other fighters. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But Martin Murray now can be sat with his mates in Warrington, in Warrington saying, I'm one fight away from Canelo. Am I right? But how many interviews have we had with Billy Joe Saunders over the last few months talking about he wants to fight against this and this guy? And, you know, he's ready for this or, you know, he's We've got big fans. Five and... years. We've heard it for five years, haven't we, with Billy? But the moment he went into rankings, which was last month, that fight would have been made. It would have been close to being made. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Look, you could say that Billy and Martin Murray have been inactive, so it's a decent-ish fight. Yeah, but look, you've got... got a problem with the fight. It's the belt on the line I've got a problem with. So, on for those rankings... You've got Zach Parker, who's fought some matchroom uh, cards before. He's a, obviously a young British fighter. I don't Zach personally Parker. rate him. I th yeah. He's number two in the rankings. That's one guy that they could have fought, made easily. Danny Jacobs, another guy, matchroom fighter. They've kept it in house with an MTK fighter, though, aren't they, with Murray? Yeah, but I think, is Zach Parker MTK? No, oh, but Murray is, isn't he? Yeah, but... I but that's what I mean. It's like you, you've got also Leron Richards. He's number 14. Leron Richards, yeah. Where's so you've got, Richardson? He's 13 and 0, isn't he? He's not ranked, but you've got on the super middleweight, you have Zach Parker, Jacobs, and, you know, Leron's obviously a Frank so fighter. But ranked with WBO. He's ranked 12, so he's come to 12 spots um, last month. So he wasn't ranked. He wasn't ranked before. 
So that's when the fight were that's when the fight were announced a month ago then. Well, it was announced yesterday, but it was probably made a month ago because otherwise you're not going to be slipping Murray into the rankings, are you? Yeah, that's what... A guy yeah. that's been in, inactive for a year, you're not going to slip them into rankings. Slipped him in a month ago and then been sorting out the money since. It's smart moves, isn't yeah. it? But it's taking a piss from a high balcony on fans yet again. Yeah, and it's... I mean, smart moves from a business point of view, yes, but it's not for the advantage of the sport. What we want to see is guys like Zach Parker get a title shot because he's 19 now and he's earned it. I mean, he lost to uh, Darrell Williams. But still, I mean, he he got the decision, which is one of the worst robberies in a British boxing ring. But still, what we want to see is the top contenders fighting guys for the title. If you're a world, if you're a world champion for many years like Billy Joe, 31 years old, how many takeover fights do you need? I mean, how many of his last fights since Lemieux were takeover fights? They've all been takeover fights, haven't they? Yeah. They have, yeah. All right, then, moving on. Uh, Kelbrook, Eddie Earn, intense beef. <laughs> Good on Kel for saying how it is, right? I think Kel, I mean, hats off to him. And you know what? He believes he can win, and I hope he wins. I'm a big Kelbrook fan, and, you know, I, I personally don't think he, he's going to win that fight, but I'm a big Kelbrook fan, but... You know what? If Eddie's disgusted him, then good on him for actually doing something. You know what? He should have signed Phil Heyman all those years ago when there was talk about after Porsche fight. His career would have been very different. He would have been a much richer man. Yeah, he would have been. Uh, do you feel that Kel Brook coming out saying that, and it's the first time he's said it in years, it's the first time he's ever said it, isn't it, in five years, I think. Do you feel that Kel Brook coming out saying, I saved the show with the Golovkin show. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that him coming out now that there's more to come out? Because he were coaxed into the fight, wasn't he? Yeah. Let's have it right. By Eddie Earn, Dominic Ingle, and Kel will know himself what it's like to get hit by a big punching middle, super middle guy, because he's a welterweight. Hey. He had a backup plan, didn't he? He still had his IBF 147, but going up and then coming back down is very dangerous. And it was like Dominic were ready with towel all the time, wasn't it, in the Golovkin fight? They knew yeah. they to save their guy because they still had that other pay-per-view. Thinking of the money down the line, you see. That's what trainer managers do, don't they? But the point I want to make is, did that fight ruin Kel Brook, yes or no? Yes. I mean, I mean, it broke his eye socket, right? And, and half broke the other one, didn't it? Yeah, if you're a good manager, it doesn't matter where the money's on the line. Like, it's a pay-per-view thing. You're a 147 fighter. Uh, you're not going to take a short notice fight to go up with the hardest punching 160 fighter. At of that all point, time. Yeah, one of them. At that point, pound for pound, top three or top five fighter. Okay, then look at it like this. It's bad management, isn't it? It's, it's terrible management. And, you know, promoters should offer these fights because that's their job. But it's bad management. If you're managing a fight and looking after their best interest, that's when you say, I, do not, I don't think it's a good idea and you shouldn't take this fight. And these are the reasons. Well, Paulie Malignaggi, welterweight champion, will, like Kelbrook, would we, would, we, would we put him in with Golovkin, Paulie? No, I mean, would we put him in um, Errol Spence in? No chance. Do you think Al Heyman would allow Errol Spence to go up there? No. So what would we put Lloyd Unigan in with Marvin Agler? No. No. Tough have done that. No. So why is Eddie Earn putting Kel Brook in with Golovkin? That shows you what he felt about Kel Brook, doesn't it? Eddie was thinking, oh my God, I'm going to lose. You banks have got me over a barrel here. I'm going to lose me 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 deposit here on this. I need to save the show and get my pound note in. Two Bob Eddie. That's what Kel Brook called him. So what does he do? Kel, you know when you said you'd fight anybody, would you fight Golovkin on pay-per-view if we paid you this much? Yeah, Eddie. Uh, I mean, how thick is he? It's his own fault. I don't want to hear about it. It's all Eddie's fault. The book stuff... Oh, but it's bad management. It's bad management. You know, fighters... Uh, managers fighters are aren't the brightest always in the world, so it's bad management. Managers. Whose job is it to look after the fighters' interests? Managers, the job to look after them. Exactly. Why do they take their 20%, right? Managers employed by the fighter. Yeah, but, they, but you're still on a three-year contract, aren't you? Which is another sort of 
idiotic thing. But he managed um, by his stepdad, didn't he? Probably, yeah. So, well, has he got a vested interest in getting him on a pay per view and thinking, well, of we get course he does. Then we get an Errol Spence pay per view, two foot price of one. Of course he does. I mean, years, it's wrong. So I think they're all to blame. Greed. They're all all of them are to blame, and they've ru- ru- ruined Kel Brook. Look, Kel Brook's finished. I don't want to hear all this about I'm going to shock the world and all that. No, 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 it will not happen. It no. won't happen. I mean, Kel Brooks can hardly make the weight, I imagine. I hope it does, but I, don't, but I just don't think that, that weight class is going to happen. No, it, it, it's awful to watch, and it's unfolding in front of our eyes. But when it came down to it, our, my fighters are my family, Coogan. When it came down to it, it's another Lee Purdy job, isn't it? My fighters mm-hmm. are my family. We all know what happened with Lee Purdy, and now look what's happening with Kel Brook. The fighters are not his family. Eddie's family is money. Family is when you're related to somebody via blood. That's family. Too many people start coming out with all this. Is my brother from another mother in boxing and all this shit, and he's like family and blah de blah. If you're not blood, you're not fucking family. Get a grip of yourselves. You know what I mean? Uh, unless you're Dean White and Dillian, of course. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even want to talk about them. Fucking joking. Why? Why do you think? Sky aren't showing that fight. Do you think Sky owe it to Kell Brook to show that fight and buy the rights? Of course they do, man. Kell Brook saved their bacon a few times, hasn't he? Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? I mean, when he got stabbed in the leg, Eddie Hearn panicked and he flew out to Spain, didn't he? Or Tenerife, wherever it were. Flew out there because Kell, you know, had a belt and he had fights lined up. So Eddie had to be seen to be in the big brother and all that. About my fighters are my family. I'm flying out to uh, see Kelly's been stabbed in the leg. No, you flew out, Eddie, because you panicked because you had a, a welterweight, a glamour division, one of the original seven glamour divisions. You had a world champion in one of glamour divisions <laughs> had been stabbed and you were panicking about dates and pay-per-view and all that crap. So don't give me all that. My fighters are my family. Don't give me that shit. So, Kelbrook, it should be on Sky, it isn't. It's going to be on a platform, Fight TV or something, I don't know, but... It yeah, it will be on that. But one of them not going to pick it up, because it, they split up, didn't they? And now, when Kelbrook gets beat against Crawford, the only game left in town for him, for a final pension, is Amir Khan, and he will take anything to fight Amir Khan, and that'll happen on BT Sport, and Warren will laugh last. You watch that happen on BT Sport when Warren makes his move after next month. That will happen because where else is Kell Brook going to go after Crawford smashes him up? Where? He quits against Crawford and then he goes and fights on a brick top show against Khan for less money than Khan. And that is the nature of the beast. That's just how it plays out. Do you agree? Yeah, can see that happening. Although I, I think Khan might not even give him payday. I think with Khan and Kelly, it's one of those things. Khan would rather lose money than give Kelly a payday, and Kelly might just retire. Now I don't think he'll retire because he's he don't he don't strike me as look. He's not brightest. He's not sharpest tool in box, is he? So what's he going to do? He's not going to go train anybody. He's not disciplined enough. He'll be punching for pay until he's thirty-eight, mate, at least. So, right, let's move on from the Babby, who's had a divorce from Eddie. Uh, pay-per-view and football we wanted to talk about, didn't you, Rico? Yes. So, obviously, most people know that the Premier League has now put and Sky pay-per-view for the matches that aren't on the schedule. So, that's 3 p.m. kickoffs and the other kickoffs that they wouldn't normally be airing because during the pandemic, we can't go to a stadium. So they've agreed that they're going to show all the matches. So they're charging 15 quid a pop on those pay-per-views. A lot of them will fall for Saturday and Sunday, right? Mainly on Saturday. So Eddie's putting on a lot of pay-per-views for boxing, 20 quid a pop, maybe more for Joshua Pulev. Can we see fans being spending 15 quid to go and watch their team play and then on top of that, 25 or 20 quid to go and watch a shitty matchroom show. 
So everybody's at it, right? Everybody's at this pay-per-view bandwagon trying to get money. And the ultimate loser is boxing. And that's happened because boxing's been so greedy with the pay-per-views. They've been talking up the numbers and telling everybody how well they're doing. So the Premier League have obviously gone and Sky, you know what? If 200,000 people tune in to watch Luke Campbell Lomachenko, we can put Brighton against Southampton on telly and we can probably get another 100, 200 grand, you know, 200,000 people to watch it. And the money obviously works differently. More money comes to Sky in the Premier League than it doesn't go into boxers' purses or football's purses in this case. So do you think that football pay-per-views going to be the death nail to boxing pay-per-view numbers? Yes. I do, because people will choose football over boxing. And do you think it's down to the greed that everybody's been, you know, boxing promoters have been putting shit on pay-per-view, so everybody's sort of clocked on to the fact that a lot of people are idiots and they'll pay for anything? Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing as well. I heard last night that off a very, very good source, somebody's really close to me, that Fury and Joshua are desperate to fight next year twice. Desperate because they think the bubble's about to burst. They're all scrambling for cover. Do you remember my video last week where I said it's every man for himself, didn't I? Mm-hmm. On every level, from a small old level all the way up to the big boys, Joshua and Fury. Every man for themselves now, and you're going to see a lot of people doing a lot of things, including Eddie Earn. The WBO, you've just seen it with WBO, they're getting sanctioning fees from Murray Saunders and they'll keep Eddie Swing yeah. so he can get the, the Fury Joshua fight on without any other managers because their goal is to be undisputed. Because if they don't get undisputed, they'll have egg on the face. So you're going to see WBC, IBO, and all the rest of them, WBA, which are the rub- most rubbish one out at lot, WBA, you're going to see everybody playing their part and doing the best for themselves it's every man for themselves and it's getting rottener and rottener and rottener by the fucking day by the fucking day from top to bottom commentators to board to sanctioning bodies to promoters to all across the board even to fighters who are putting stuff out every day i mean for example if i turn my telly on now right but I my telly on now, I guarantee there'll be another interview from some trainer or some boxer. The same old people because they're all scrambling for positions, aren't they now? And it's going to yep. get worse, you know. It's going to get worse. And they're not paying anybody now, promoters. They're paying them half as what they were getting before. Am I right? You know, um, you're right. You know why... Boxing, why guys like Bob Arum and others survive? I think it's just because they actually realise that they can't take and take from the sport. So yeah. you think about someone like Lomachenko, right? Generational talent. I don't think he's ever fought on a pay per view in the US. No. If he was fighting in the UK, he would have been pay per view six or seven times already. What did he get? So they realised that they. What did Lomachenko get? A million and a half. Something like that, but. You know, regardless, in the UK, if you're named, you just get shifted onto pay-per-view. Whereas in the US, I don't think it's ever fought on pay-per-view. This Teofimo Lopez fight was on ESPN, right? Normal ESPN. What, like Dylan White never fought for a European, but he's had five pay-per-view? Exactly. And that's the thing. That's They realise they can't take the fans for granted because they realise UFC is a big challenge for them in the US and even in this country. But in boxing... It's the race to the bottom where Eddie Hearn, fighters, managers, promoters try and take as much money out of the sport as they can because they know one day it's going to come to an end. The day Joshua retires and Fury retires, we're not going to have any more pay-per-view stars. We haven't got any now, really, after Joshua Fury, have we? No, that's it. And they're not fighting killers, are they? Well, Fury's just fought Wilder, but... Oh, who's he fighting next? He's going to have a touch in here next. Joshua's got a touch next, which brings me to the next question. Who left 40 after Christmas, right? Is it another Is it another easy one for Joshua? He's had, he's had, he's had a Povetkin, he's had a Pulev. I thought Povetkin win looks good now, doesn't it? But Pulev, come on. Yeah. Uh, you know what? 
it's not a fight that interests me. I mean, I'll obviously watch it, but it's not a fight that interests any of the fans. I mean, we're not, none of us rate Pula particularly or think that he's a threat. Who's his best win? Key Fury? Yeah, you could say that, yeah. yeah. Who else is he for? Got cut, didn't he, in round two, a rate bad cut. Yeah, maybe Chisora or Key Fury, one of those are his best wins. Chisora and Yui are his best wins. Yeah. Euro level, isn't he? He's Euro level. Pula Should he be fighting? Level. Yeah, I mean, look, he's, he's earned his position there, but he hasn't fought against anyone. He's not. We, none of us think. None of us think that Josh is going to lose this fight. No, we don't. Yes, I mean, Joshua didn't look good against Ruiz first or particularly the second time, but we don't know what Josh's mental state is. At the end of the day, this isn't a fight that excites us. There's about 10 other heavyweights that we'd rather see Joshua in with. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, then, moving on. Uh, Dylan White, Povetkin, is that a pay-per-view? And does Dylan White win the rematch? Um, I think it's a pay-per-view, yeah. Sorry, I don't think it's a pay-per-view. I didn't think it was a pay-per-view the first time, so that hasn't changed my opinion. There's no belt on the line. You mean in the current climate, it, I suppose it could be passed as pay-per-view. If she's no, I mean, if, if Lopez against Lomachenko is in pay-per-view, then it shouldn't be pay-per-view. Oh, and, yeah, also, yeah, why, and why should a guy that hasn't fought for a world title and is not fighting for a world title make millions of pounds? Otherwise, he's just inflating purses. Dillian White shouldn't be making millions of pounds. Should he? <clears throat> no, Dylan White's not fought for a European title. He's swerved anybody that's any good for money. He's fought. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not. If Reebok's fight wasn't a pay-per-view, Chisora fight wasn't a pay-per-view, Dylan White shouldn't have fought a pay-per-view. If we want to keep the standards of pay-per-view at a certain level, then if you're not fighting a big unification fight or, you know, a big crossroads fight for a world title, then you shouldn't have pay-per-view fights. Otherwise, any... Heavyweight fight will turn into a pay-per-view. We might have Dave Allen against Chisora in pay-per-view in 2022. If Dave Allen beats Lovejoy, he's a WBA ranked top 15 world rank fighter. He could end up getting a voluntary against Femi. Yeah, who knows? One fight from Femi, another one like <laughs> Martin Murray, one fight from Canelo. That's the nature of the beast, isn't it? Yeah, and watch uh, the B Masons tell us that Dave Allen, look at the right hand he threw against uh, Nick Webb. Joshua's vulnerable for the overhand rise. Do you know Dave Allen's opponents? Got 57 opponents. Are oh, 19 opponents. The average is 3, 10, and 1. I mean, he's never fought outside Mexico. What does that tell you about a heavyweight fighter? That's in his mid thirties. That he's a US fighter that's never fought outside of Mexico. What? Why do fighters go to Mexico to build their they records? Fight, right. Fight glass collectors and kitchen chefs, don't they? And exactly. I mean, some of these shows aren't probably even sanctioned properly. You just oh. send in a card and say, "I won on the show in Tuana or somewhere like that." Yeah, that's how it works. He could be the. A terrible, terrible journeyman with a 19 and 0, 19 KO record. And he is because the rankings of them that he's beat are f- his box wrecks 444. Dave Allen's is 46, so he's 398 places above him. But yeah, he's 19 and 0, Dave's 18, 5 and 2. It's a mismatch of terrible proportions, Rico. 18 of them 19 wins have got losing records. But Sky are going to dress it up as as the guy's the second coming of Gerald McClellan. Yeah, Bean, exactly. Can you imagine Bean going into a frenzy. Nice to be back, Johnny, in the Blue Ribbon <laughs> Division. Rough, tough, rugged, durable, all action, compelling. That's what he'll be doing, won't he? Be. You know what? Lovejoy has done 
he's done a good job, right? He's just built, padded up his record, he's got a ranking, and he's been waiting to sell that record to the highest better, and that's the game, isn't it? After this, he will never fight again. He's just one of those guys that he's there to wait for the big fight, like remember Trevor Bryant, the heavyweight? Trevor Bryant, yeah, what happened to him? I don't know, but he's another guy, right? Got up high up the rankings and waiting to be mandatory and waiting to get a fight. I mean, he's a Don King fighter, wasn't he? He got to number one, didn't he, fighting guys who padded records, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the game for some of these guys. I don't know. It's like being a Steffi Bull fighter, isn't it? That's what he does with his fighters, doesn't he? Pads them out. Your, your favourite, your favorite, uh, the man that tweets uh, to on himself. behalf of uh, other people, yeah. The man who tweets really... himself from Terry Harper's account and then replies back on his account. <laughs> <laughs> Steffi, stop talking to yourself. You'll go mad, you know. If you're not already bad, if you're not already mad, uh, which brings me to uh, Callum Smith, Callum Johnson, Josh Warrington, John Ryder, Martin J. Ward. What is Eddie doing with them guys? What's happening with them? They're discarded like rubbish, aren't they? The thing is, boxing's purses are so inflated and Eddie's created this whole thing where fighters have been overpaid. So getting these guys out for fights that we care about is pretty hard. I don't think they can make it happen. So what Eddie's doing is playing a waiting game where he's just going to say, well, if you don't accept this purse, then you're not going to get on a card this year. And, they, and he's just waiting it out. He's waiting it out. And then at some point they'll come back and say, Someone like uh, Josh Warrington, okay, I'll accept the uh, 80 grand and I'll have a fight against the knockover job. But Josh Warrington needs to get defending because otherwise, I don't know what the rules are at the moment about vacating titles or being inactive, but you know what? He should just send Josh, Josh Warrington to the US. Let him go on a, a top rank show, fight there. You know, Josh Warrington yeah. is not even 30 year old yet. He's still 29 and he's 30 and 0. And he's got a good record what's he been about three world champions uh, maybe four I'm not sure I think it's three or four he's fought everybody he's won he's gone all the way through the levels which is what I like he's gone all the way through levels and he just seems to be not spoke about Callum Smith's another one that's gone through levels he's not spoke about it's craziness what's going on in front of our eyeballs well, the most talented fighters just aren't getting their opportunities and they aren't being built up, are they? I mean, Josh Warrington has cleaned up in this country, Kid Galahad, Frampton, Lee Selby, and then he's fought against guys like Kiko Martinez and others that are decent opponents. He should have signed for top rank. He should have signed for Matchroom. I get why he signed for Matchroom, because he wanted his big shows in Leeds and he wanted... You know, to bring these big fighters over here, or, you know, the guys like, I think Kanju's moved up, but the other guys. But the reality is, in those divisions, the money's in the US, signed for a US fight, you know, for a US promoter. Do you think that... Like Josh Taylor, right? Josh Taylor did the right choice. What would have Josh Taylor done if he was a matchroom fighter at the moment? They wouldn't be doing anything for him, would they? No. At least Bob Arum can get him onto a Warren show to fight against an easy opponent. Do you think that Frank Warren's got a crystal ball because he let Billy Billy Joe Saunders go, go and he obviously he had compensation for that. He were compensated, so I've heard. Warrington, he let him go, right? They've Beefy Smith, he let Beefy Smith go to Eddie. What have these guys done? We Eddie. Yeah. You know what? Frank's timing it all, right? He knows he's got a young crop of fighters or youngish, you know, if you Dennis yards a bit McCann's older. But fighter, isn't he? We like yeah, him. you've got Dennis McCann, you've Archie got Dubois, Sharp. Archie Sharp, Leron Richards, all these other guys that he has currently. And they're all going to come up together. So in two, three years' time, Frank will have the strongest stable. Who will Eddie have? Think about it, three years' time. Who's going to be Eddie's? Eddie, is he? No, it, I mean, there's not another Olympic cycle, so you can't sign them. And even if you sign them for Olympic cycle, they're going to be three, four years. Yeah. So Eddie can't, Eddie's not building a stable. Frank's realised some of these older guys, they're expensive, you know, they're expensive to have. The sanctioning fees are expensive. I'm going to do something that's a bit 
not as good as Matchroom probably as a product or I'm just going to run these shows, build these guys up. And then in two, three years' time, BET will have world title fight, you know, competitive fights after competitive fight. You know, guys like Mark Heffron against uh, Denzel Bentley, that's a great fight. He's matching them against each other. I mean, I'm not Frank's biggest fan, but, you know, he knows how the game works. It's all about long term. And sometimes you just have to cut your losses. If somebody's a world, you know, if somebody's a world champion, it doesn't mean that they are going to help you as a promoter. Or, you know, they're going to bring eyeballs because look at that show that Billy Joe did in uh, Steven and Dry. How much of a disaster was that? How much money do you think Frank lost on that? Frank will have looked at that and thought, do you know what? Will that finish? Will that the end for them? Oh, probably, yeah. I end, think that was probably. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody might be a good fighter, right? Somebody might be a good fighter, but they might not attract the crowds. They might not get people watching them. They might annoy people. It doesn't mean if you're a good fighter that you're going to be necessarily box office or entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. But I think Frank's ahead of the game and he's planning for the future. Eddie's just planning to get Joshua in with Fury and cash out. Joshua's probably got six fights left, has he? Fury two, pool left, Dylan White, maybe one with Wilder or two. That's six fights. And then I think mm-hmm. they'll get Eddie could keep it going for another six for Joshua. And then I think that'll be them gone. They'll they'll not want to work way out pay per view, Eddie, will he? They'll not want to do these shows if you know pay per view stars. Because he'd just be going around in circles for a lot less money, wouldn't he? He'd have a lot of hassle on his plate, wouldn't he? Well, Eddie's, Eddie's against the race. You know, Eddie's sort of racing against time here. So Eddie's game is this. Get as much money as, as possible from the DAZN contract as long as DAZN keeps going. Just fill up your obligations. Get as much money as possible. Pocket as much for yourself. And then once that's done, because that's a bad contract, then... They can leave the sport. See what happens with Sky. I mean, DAZN are now in the UK, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, so that's going to give him a tricky situation. See what Sky do with the next contract. Sky might just say, I wouldn't be surprised if Sky said, we're going to sign a deal with Joshua and Matchroom come to us for shows, MTK come to us for shows, and then we'll take the shows that we like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you mean, yeah. It's possible, but... Uh... I think that it's all pointing towards maybe Joshua signing a deal with Sky and Eddie Mm -hmm. behind the scenes being the front man for Joshua and Sky, you know, and that that, working out that that kind of way. Uh, But I don't see any other pay-per-view stars coming through. Akoli and Boatsy, they're not going to be pay-per-view, are they? They're both both rubbish in my opinion, mate. Rubbish, honestly. They're not entertaining, are they? Okay, if you remove, uh, if you remove the Sky deal that Eddie Hearn has from, you know, his relationship with Joshua, what does Eddie Hearn bring to the table? What can Freddie Cunningham and others do? They don't need Eddie, do they? No, Eddie's just there because he puts on. He's like the event manager, right? He gets the, he helps a bit with the undercard. He does a bit of hype. He's involved, but Eddie's just. A cog in the wheel. So if Sky turn around and say, we want Joshua, uh, we'll have some of your shows, Eddie. It might look like Eddie's involved, but the reality is Freddie Cunningham and all these other guys around Joshua, they call the shots. Eddie's just there to, you know, build the undercard and run the event and make the tea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, coming to end now. Uh, Jamie McDonnell. Jamie McDonnell. Uh, my friend, my fighters are my family. Jamie McDonald's walking around Doncaster, uh, nearly a cruiserweight in weight, and, and his brother, fat as pigs, Michelin men. Now, what where's Eddie saving them? Why, why ain't he got them dates? Why ain't he getting them out? Are they no good to him? What, what's happening? Thought they were his family. We saw the, we saw the video of uh, Jamie McDonald pest, didn't we? Yeah. We saw that we saw the Scott Fitzgerald things. What does Eddie do to fighters that step out of line that add no value to him? Drops them like a bad habit. Exactly. That's what's happened to Jay McDonald. Um, Jay McDonald, sure point, never left. She'll stay with Dennis, to be honest. 
Yeah, the, the 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 word the room. Sorry, the word round the campfire is Jamie McDonald were partying hard, and Caldwell were on his case, and he were reporting back to Eddie, telling tales. So, yeah, wow, you know, Penfold doing Penfold. his job. I mean, how many, how many fighters he got? What's he got now? The wrong Richards, Jordan Gill, and Opie Price. So he, he has him. one other one, doesn't he? The, Pretty sure he does. Well. He seems to be on social media every day doing interviews, Colwell. Every time I see him, I see him on there. And he needs to stop telling people his name's Dave. Dave, stop telling people your name's Dave. It's Davinda Coldwell, born in Calcutta, India. So stop making art. You're called Dave from Rotherham. All right, Davinda from India. So I just need to correct people on the bullshit. But no, uh, I've got no time for Caldwell. You know that, don't you, Caldwell? Point mm-hmm. I want to make is that Tesco Joe and Caldwell, they seem to be having little digs at Eddie Earn. and Kel Brooks having digs at him. Beefy Smith and Callum are on about retiring this year. Is the splits in the cult? I think the big problem is this, right? Once you, as a trainer or manager... You have to align with Eddie Warren, sorry, Eddie Hearn or Frank Warren. Yeah. So once you align, you can't go to the other side. You can't take fighters to the other side. So they they realize they probably, you know, Eddie is not as good as good to them as he thought. You better off being a guy on the outside, like someone like if Steve Wood, where you have your fighters, they can go and work with whatever. But they decided they want to limelight and they want to be associated by Matchroom, associated to Matchroom, which meant that. Now, when Matru Mom put on shows, the fighters aren't getting the offers they wanted. They aren't getting their cuts as usual. It, it's it's not a good deal for them, is it? No, no. Let's I see if Dave Caldwell's on the commentary, right? Let's see if Dave Caldwell's on the commentary. Call Let's see if he. Let's call him Devinder by his proper name. <laughs> <laughs> That's sod, aren't I? No. Yeah. Let's see. I, I Let's see, see if he's on the commentary. I'm about Devinder. I see where you're coming from, mate. I see where you're coming from, but the point I want to make is, do you whore yourself out like Davy Day? Like, he, he whores himself, doesn't he, to BT and Sky? Or, do you go with one promoter, then say you're not happy, good at other, then go back and get nothing? Like, Josh Warrington's dad said, yeah, we went to Frank Warren because Eddie Yearn, there were no uh, personal relationship. He had a bit of a pop, didn't he, Eddie, didn't he, uh, Sean O'Hagan? Mm-hmm. But then... They've had to go back then, aren't they, with the tails between the legs when it didn't work out with Bricks up. And do you think Eddie must have thought, ah, coming back, eh, and I'll show you. You think that's what's happened? A bit like we... No, uh, I mean, go on. What do you think? You know what? I mean, Steve Woods is manager, isn't he? I, I think so. Steve Woods, the ma- yeah, Steve Woods, Warrington's manager. And um, Steve Woods has just got the best deal for his fighter. He's a, he's a good manager, isn't he? He's a good boxing man. He's got the deal for his fighter and it, he doesn't care I mean look Sean O'Hagan can say what he wants Sean's obviously going to protect his son and you know what Sean O'Hagan's done an amazing job for his son but Steve Wood is the man that's running the show and because Steve isn't aligned to Eddie or Frank it means that Steve can get the best deal once you're aligned you know if if Joe Gallagher goes to Frank do you think Frank's going to give him a good deal? Because he knows that something has wrong, gone wrong with stand Eddie. Each other, he's going to Gallagher exactly. and stand each other. And Eddie Earn exactly. So that's why he's low-balling Gallagher fighters, isn't he? Because he knows that he can't go capping hand back to Warren. because he's, He has got exactly. a good fight, Joe Gallagher. He's not a whore like a lot of others. He does stand by his fighters. But it would kill Joe Gallagher to go back to Bricktop. It would kill him inside. It would kill him. But... You know, and Callum Johnson, how much longer can he be not getting fights? Callum Smith, Beefy Smith. What is happening with these people? Natasha Jonas, they were promised Harper rematch and Eddie's reneged on it, hasn't he? Well, we know Steffi Ball doesn't want the fight, but Eddie's reneged on it, hasn't he? On the Jonas yeah. match with Harper. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It's, the thing is, you know, it's it's a decent, you know, it's a good fight. We should probably see the rematch, but again, Eddie's Eddie's not Natasha Jonas's promoter. He doesn't care, does he? She's an MTK fighter. 
he's all about building Terry Harpo's on Sky adverts, and it's all about the return of women's boxing, but it's only for certain women what they do it for. They're not going to do it in a fair way, are they? No. Yeah. Women's boxing should be more competitive than men's boxing because the purses are a lot smaller. Most of them float around the same weight classes. There shouldn't be the same splits that you have Warren against Hearn. Most of them are MTK fighters or, you know, with smaller promoters. There should be no reason why you couldn't make the best, best British women fight against each other. If the WBSS comes back, you should have, like, all the best women in the division. Let's see who's the best. And you know what? I would actually watch that because I think that would be entertaining. We shouldn't have the same problems. And we also shouldn't be bringing foreign fighters, females that we've never heard about, challenging someone like Terry Harper because who gives a shit? That's what kills women's boxing. Nobody gives a shit about watching Terry Harper against some woman from Brazil fighting that we've never heard of and we've never seen her fight before. What about that Chantel Cameron woman that she fought? Did you see the state of her? Because her bra was dropping half the time, wasn't it? It was like two women having a straightener in Witherspoons at 11 o'clock on a Friday night, wasn't it? Oh, put, put Chantel Cameron on, on, on against uh, Katie Taylor. That's the fight I want to see. That's the fight everybody wants to see. Yeah, well, they'll, they'll get that one on eventually, but it's all about prolonging it and dragging it out and keep, keeping keeping it going and dragging it out till fans are going berserk, like Fury Joshua. I don't see it happening next year, Fury Joshua. I don't see it happening next year. I want it to. I mean, I want it to so badly, but I don't see it happening. I see egos getting involved and people, they've got a ready-made excuse. Well, there's no gate money. They'll just keep dragging it out and dragging it out and they're going to try this pay-per-view thing, aren't they? Like they're doing it with football. It's going to, they're on about doing it with tennis, aren't they now? You know what I mean? You it's, know what? Just make it make make it abroad. I mean, if you don't have paper, if you can't have crowd, just you know what? Go to some rich Middle Eastern country, make it there, get the money from them. You know that covers the gate thing. That you can probably have crowds there. I don't care. I just want to see good fights. This is why I was saying yesterday on Twitter, there is no single fight that I'm looking. I might be looking forward to um, Tank Davis against uh, Santa Cruz. Yeah. I, I look I look forward to Savannah Marshall against Hannah Ranking, but I sort of already know the outcome for that. Two but there's no, yeah, exactly. But there's no Tank single knocks, fight I care about. Tank knocks Cruz out and Savannah knocks Ranking out. Two that's a good double bet for you all. Tank Davis to splatter Cruz, because Santa Cruz couldn't punch in his own weight division, and Savannah, she writes Anna Ranking off. That's a that's a mismatch, but I'm I want to see Savannah as a world champion, but Savannah against Rankin is one of the worst mismatches I've ever seen, to be honest. You know, in, in women's boxing, it's that mm. bad a mismatch. But they've delivered for Savannah in, a, is it a ninth fight or something? So a world title in nine fights. I mean, you couldn't make it up, could you? So, all right then. Well, listen, well, Rico, well, it's been a pleasure. Anything yes, else? Yes, likewise. Yeah. Don't buy pay-per-views. Make sure Eddie Hearn and everybody else, if they have Terry O'Connor on the show, you know, on the shows or cards yeah. and stuff, make it known that you think it's a disgrace. Keep yeah. on hammering it. Keep on tweeting about it. Don't let the momentum die down because once it does, if we do let it die down, everybody's gonna, you know, everything's gonna go back to normal. Yeah, and if anybody's got a problem with what we've just said, unlucky, we're not really bothered because. What we see on here is our opinions. Um, that's how it goes. So all you people who keep complaining, uh, as people keep complaining about ads on here, skip ads if you don't like it. Just press that button at the bottom. It says skip ads. They, they do keep putting a lot on YouTube, though. But I'll tell YouTube, but, oh, don't watch. I'm not making you watch. You don't have to watch. <laughs> Go and watch Sporting Icons. <laughs> Go How many views is icon, eh? What's Sporting Icons latest? What's he saying at the moment? I don't really, I don't really look. People send me odd stuff about him, but Sporting Icons with fifty-two thousand subscribers, he don't get as many views as me. <laughs> he's got ten times subscribers as me, or maybe he's eleven or twelve times more. So I don't know. We wish Sporting well, but Sporting, I know you're watching. Stop hiding behind your camera. 
Stop it. Come out from behind your camera. Come out, come out, wherever you are, sporting. <laughs> He'll do a video. But, uh, he lives in my head. But let's, uh, well let's give a shout out to a few things. Let's give a shout out to Terry's podcast. Terry's podcast, the be- what's it called now? Now it's called Beyond Boxing. Beyond Boxing. Uh, very, very our good friend. Uh, yeah. Uh, very good breakdown of uh, Lomachenko against Lopez. Really, if you want to get insight into what boxing mind and, you know, what boxing trainer sees, some really technical stuff. And Terry's got a great docile voice. So yeah. it's good Good before you go to bed, you'll fall asleep. But, yeah, it's a good good episode. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Shout out to boxing aside. Uh, Ultratech, yeah. Ultratech Raw. He's put Ultratech out a few videos. Raw. We like good him. guy. We like Ultratech. Who else is there, Rico? And you've got a couple of yeah. down there that you do some at we. Uh, you know what? I'll give a shout out to, uh, why is it, Steve Goodwin and Martin. They do their weekly thing, which is people can send questions and and give his perspective and stay quite candid. Yeah, Martin's a good guy. I've, I've given him a bit of sticking past, but he's all right, Martin. I like him. I, Martin, I like yeah, him. He's a, top, the, he's a top guy. Listen to his reunion with Terry. They ought to yeah. do one every six months or something. I thought that was brilliant, the reunion. Yeah, I thought it was good. It was good. Well, uh, I think that's about it. Martin, what's he called? Andy. Andy. They're all right, then. They're all right. They're good kids. Good kids. And they tell it straight, don't they? Has Martin still got a Transformers bed cover? Uh, uh, you need to ask Eddie Hearn, but Eddie Hearn's obviously blocked him, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I like Steve Goodwin as well. He's one of the good guys as well. He's all right. Yeah, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a nice I like guy. Mo um, as well, but he looks like he's going to have an heart attack, doesn't he? We went to that Mo Pride show, Liam Cameron, where he came with a pal, do you remember? When we were pissed up in a uh, bar. At yeah. Yeah. yeah, Elliot Matthews uh, was fighting. Yeah. I don't know. What can you do? All right, well, listen, Rico, I'm going to get off because it's Saturday dinner time. Thanks for coming on. Have a great week. Pleasure, my man. You too. Don't have nightmares. Don't have nightmares. All right. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye. Well, that was my good friend Rico Helier from Finland. Born in Finland. Lives in London. Uh... He's got a really, really good job in London. He's a very bright kid. And he started Porky's Corner with me because I couldn't work a computer, could I? I was like, I keep putting password in Rico, but it won't have it. I've tried everything for hours. And so have all my family. And he's like, oh, just press that thing on the left that says caps lock. And I went, oh, okay. Pressed it, did it, and then it worked. So I've got a bit better since then. But, uh, yeah, it started... Porky's Corner with me. He's a good guy. He's done a, a few things behind the scenes for a few people, uh, legal issues and stuff like that, for Dennis, Peter Fury, people like that. He's one of boxing's straight guys and a good, good guy. He's a little, I think he's, a, what is he, Rico? 29, 30? Good bloke. So follow him on Twitter, at lead underscore right. Is that that's that's like a little slit in it at bottom of, in between words, not in middle, it's at bottom. At leads underscore right. I'm thick, aren't I? All right, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep sporting boxing. Shout out to Innovation Alloys, AJ Hobson, and South Yorkshire Packaging. And we'll give Michelle a shout out at Dennis's office, Miss Money Penny. How are you doing, Michelle? Smoking a 20 plate mini. I seen you the other day on Parkway. And your new mini must be doing well. Peace out.